In this video, I want to take you through three ways of processing your 4x5 film sheets. Now, developing your 4x5 film shots once you've taken them can seem daunting at first, but I'm going to show you today three ways of doing it, three varying levels of sophistication and cost. And so let's get cracking with the first one. Now, this is known as the SP445 Steam and Press Developing Tank. Now, this is the most recent uh, tank I have got for developing my film in, my 4x5 film. And it is very simple and straightforward. It is literally just a container in which you have a couple of film holders. Now, the film slides onto these film holders. Bearing in mind all this is done in the dark, of course, in your dark room or your, your changing bag. Um, and you will be getting very used to doing this sort of thing once you've done it a few times. Now the film is slid into position under these little retaining clips and you can put two sheets of film onto each of these little holders, one on each side with the emulsion facing out. And then they slot simply into the tank. And once they're in the tank and you have loaded up your four sheets maximum, you close the lid and chemicals could be poured in in the light. So once you've got it set up and you're ready to go, you don't need a dark room. You don't need to be working in dark conditions anymore. You pour the chemicals in here, you pour them out when they're finished, you rinse with water at the end. Now that's a very simple way of processing your black and white and also color film. Now the nice thing about this is you can sit it in a water bath. Now the water bath will maintain the temperature of the chemicals inside at a constant amount. So if you put it in a decent body of water and maintain that body of water at say 20 degrees, the chemicals will stay at 20 degrees and you'll get even development for black and white. You can also do color in it. I've yet to do color myself, but I have done color in very similar ways using uh, roll film in normal tanks such as these without any clever uh, thermostat to keep it warm. So that is a very, very simple way of doing black and white color. And one of the best things about it is it only uses under 500 milliliters of chemistry. So less than half a liter, which is very economical for four sheets of film. Now the next method is uh, it's a bit of an unusual one because this particular device, the Patterson Orbital, was never intended for processing film. It was intended for developing color um, RA4, which is your, your negative process, which is color uh, prints, if you like. And now in the 80s, I did color printing in one of these devices. Um, essentially, it's another tray uh, with a light tight lid. Uh, you put the sheets of film this time, again in the dark, into the tray, maximum of four again, emulsion side facing up, and you can close the lid, and once it's closed, it's light tight. So now, it's in a fit state to take it out into your normal lit environment, mix the chemicals, and you put them in the top here, which is a light tight entrance for the chemicals. Now, they do come with a little manual base, which allows you to rotate the chemicals in a fairly even pattern. Now, if you follow a fairly slow pace like this, the chemicals won't slosh about too much. They will get across all the surfaces evenly. Now there's also a motor base you can buy. Now I have the motor base. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I tend to find I prefer sitting this in a bath of water. Now again, if I sit this in a bath of water at the correct temperature, then I'm gonna be able to maintain the chemicals at the right temperature, which means I can get an optimum processing time and the quality is better. If you use this without a water bath, the chemicals may drift off in terms of their, their consistency. Now, it may not be a problem if you live in a warm country. I live in Britain, it's not a very warm country. So in the winter, I would typically not use this device because it is a little bit inconsistent. Best thing, however, you can get by with just 200 milliliters of chemistry. So a fifth of a liter of chemistry, it's a tiny amount. And that is enough to cover all four sheets of film and develop them. So incredibly economical to use. Now, if you want to step up to another level of sophistication, shall we say, you may want to consider something like a rotary processor. Now this is a bit of space. This is a, the most basic Jobo processor. Now these were incredibly popular in the 90s and into the noughties. Uh, I used to have a very nice one 
with an automated lift on it and I sold it for about 80 pounds. Probably worth about 700 now, so a bit of a stupid move there. This is the most basic model and all it does is it rotates a tank full of chemicals in a water bath. Now the beauty of that is you have a fairly large body of water in this bath and this is constantly rotating. Now because it's constantly rotating you only have a small amount of chemical which just about fills the bottom part of the drum. So you can get away with a much smaller amount of chemical than if you were doing traditional inversion methods. Okay, You can get away with under half a litre of chemistry for this particular tank. Now this tank has a spiral and this spiral takes up to six sheets of film. So, so if I have a sheet of film here, I would load it emulsion side down so it's not going to catch on anything. And I would slide it very carefully and clip it into the spiral. You can see there it can't move now. It's just caught on this little lip here. Now I can, if I want to, load up to six sheets of film into this particular spiral. There's two in there. Now I tend to do four. Now the reason is the middle slot is very, very close to the other two. And if you had any mispositioning or alignment or you were a bit rough in the handling, it is possible for one of the sheets to move slightly and it could stick and that would ruin the development. So I have done six in it, but I tend to do four just to be on the safe side. So all three methods I've shown you at the moment take four sheets of film. And once I've loaded the sheets into there, I clip the lid on and it's completely light tight and it can be processed in the process of thus full of water, set your temperature on these dials here, and it's a rotary processor. It will rotate the chemicals backwards and forwards following a cycle. Uh, very consistent, very, very easy to manage. But, you know, even second hand, you're probably looking at a few hundred pounds, two, three hundred pounds for one of these. And these drums are becoming increasingly expensive and the spiral's about 60, 70 pounds. So you are looking upwards of maybe 500 pounds, 500 dollars to get started with this mechanism, but this is the best for color. And the reason it's best for color is because it is temperature controlled. Uh, I can set this and keep it at a pretty accurate temperature. It's only the basic model. There are far better models out there, but you're looking at big numbers, big, big amount of money to get into the better models. This is quite straightforward. So I hope you found that uh, useful, that very, very brief explanation of three ways I process my four by five films. There are other ways of doing it. There are tubes. You can actually roll up the film sheets in and develop them in a water bath. There are also um, inserts that go into typical film tanks where you can, again, similar to this one, slot them into grooves. Uses a bit more chemistry, but uh, very affordable. Now, I would have to say in summary that if you are getting into developing 4x5 film, probably doing black and white to begin with, I would personally recommend a Steam and Press 445, SP445. It is around about £100, which might look like a lot of money for what it is, but there's quite a bit of engineering gone into this. It's, it's quite complex inside, yet very easy to use, keeps the light out, very small amount of chemistry used, very easy to keep the temperature constant. So I do like that. That's my, my personal favourite. However, if you want to use the Patterson, that's got a motorised base so you can keep things moving without attending to it, do longer developing sessions, maybe 15 minutes for some chemicals. And there is a big advantage to this for me as well. And it's something I've shown in a previous video. I can actually, if I reconfigure the pins in here, I can develop 8x10 film. Now, developing 8x10 is a completely different kettle of fish. I can only do one sheet at a time, but it's very economical, very simple. It's the only way I've got to develop my 8x10 films. And finally, if your budget will stretch to it, I would heartily recommend a rotary processor uh, with some sort of tank which fits that model. Beauty of this is if you want to get into colour, particularly colour colour slide and the like, where the times are a bit longer and you have multiple baths in there and you've got to keep the temperature of the chemicals pretty consistent, this is a better way of doing it. You can do colour in these two at a push, but this is a better way of doing it because you've got a thermostatically controlled water bath and the motor agitation is very, very even, very consistent, streak free. I really do like that method, but that does take more setting up and there's more initial investment obviously in it as well. For black and white, that is more than adequate, absolutely perfect for, for most needs. So 
I do hope you enjoyed that. Uh, no doubt I'll do more processing videos. We are in uh, lockdown at the moment, so uh, my hair is getting my hair is getting longer and uh, shaggier. And uh, but I've got a lot of things I want to go through and cover. There's loads and loads of things to do with film photography I can get through in the next few weeks and months. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you again soon.